Good evening folks and welcome back to Down on Boddington Farm. My name is Agent 86 and we've had a couple of requests from viewers to see what we have in our own trauma first aid kit here on Boddington Farm. Before we go too much further, um, I just will add in that with my previous work history I've been a medic in the Royal Australian Navy and as well as an EMT for about 12 months in the UK. What we have in our trauma kit is what we feel that we need for us here. Everything in here I've shown uh, Bibby how to use so it's up to you folks to decide what you need or what you think is best for your own trauma kit at your place. I will do a quick disclaimer that this is not a first aid training video or documentary nor is it a medical how-to or training session. This is a have a look at what we've got, see how you go. If you like what we have, think about adding it to your own. If you don't like what you see, what we have in ours, then don't put in yours. This is just a viewing on what we have because we've had some of our, our viewers ask what have you got in, in your trauma kit so ladies and gentlemen here it goes I'm going to start off with some real basic ones here first up we have antiseptic solution iodine you can see it there next Probably one of my personal favourites, which most people know, is hydrogen peroxide. Good for disinfecting or for cleaning wounds. I will say, use it sparingly because it can stain like a mofo. We have super glue in case of any major cuts and we can't get to a medical center or to a doctor for gluing wounds back together in a, in a pinch if it's a dire situation. Don't laugh. And here we have Tampons, good, good for, for plugging penetrating injuries such as knife wounds, stab wounds, gunshot wounds. If you're not, tell me if you're not sure how to, ask your missus. Sanitary pads. A good wound dressing in a pinch. We've got one, two, three, four of these. Let me get this all back together nice and neat. I'm only just, just throwing it back together because we will pack it back together properly later on. Bandages. There's more in here. Self explanatory. You've got dress a wound, you need bandages. I always say the, the more the better. We've got a pink bandage here as well as some crepe, crepe bandages. Snake bite kit. Let's have a, have a look in this. has a little snake identif identification chart, not adherent dressing, a triangular bandage, just to pack, pack this together well, snake bite bandages. Now, 
In case you folks haven't seen these, snake bite bandages, really cool. The, the good ones, as I would assume these ones are, have, when you unwrap it, it looks like it's got a ladder pattern down the middle. <coughs> when that, when you stretch the bandage out, that goes from being a, like a ladder pattern to a line of squares. And when it's when the bandage forms that line of squares, you know then that you have got the right tension on the bandage when you're applying the, the bandage to the, the snake bite area. I got that snake bite kit off catch.com and it was like under twenty dollars. Must have for any even a basic first aid uh, kit or have in the glove box of your car CPR mask. Really easy to use and it helps keep you safe from any possible nasties that the other person might have. Large wound dressing. Gloves, essential. As we used to say in the SES, who's going to rescue the rescuer when the rescuer needs to, to be rescued? If you're doing first aid on someone, protect yourself. Because if you're not going to, to protect yourself, who will? Your protection is up to you. Protective face mask. Self-explanatory. If you're treating someone that from outside the family, he, you don't know who they are, and this beer flu situation is getting really out of hand, or you just want to be extra extra careful, put a face mask on. No one is going to crucify you for that. And if they do, they're the ones who should be, who should be crucified. We also have a red one puffer. In case you come across someone who's asthmatic, or if you have asthmatics in, in your family, it, it can literally be a, a lifesaver. We have a very basic first aid kit. This is the one that you can purchase from any reputable pharmacy, and they have a myriad of things in here. They have in ours, we've got Rat, rat tooth forceps, tw disposable tweezers, scissors, gaviscon, satchels, dressings, like you find in, in most first aid kits, pins. Nothing need to be more said about that. Antiseptic solution or hand wash. Self explanatory. Once again, look after yourself. Now, if you've done time in the, in the armed forces, you would call this a field wound dressing. What this basically is in this little package, it is a combination of bandage and gauze. But you open it up, put the gauze over the wound, and wrap it up. Once again, another ideal thing to keep in your glove box if you don't have a first aid kit in the car. Plastic bags. Someone's got a severed toe, finger, teeth knocked out. You can always put it get into a clean plastic bag, into some cool or chilled water, in the case of a tooth, into milk or get the person to hold that, that in, in their mouth so the tooth doesn't die, but you can even put old or dispose of um, dressing items in here for throwing in the bin. Honey, I've got a headache. Now, these here 
are known as the Goodell's Airways. And they come in a range of sizes. Let's get, get them all out. All the way from infants, babies, infants, toddlers, youth, adults, or if you want, even a freaking a frickin T-Rex. Now, we've got these because I've actually had previous instructions in my, in my previous occupations how to use them. I've shown Vivian how to use them. If you do know, if you have actually been given instruction as to how to use these, have them in your first aid kit there. An easy way to, to help at least try and keep an airway open, especially when you're doing, doing recess. If you haven't been taught how to use these, don't. Okay? I'm not saying that to be mean or nasty or pious, but you don't want to get yourself into a world of legal trouble trying to do stuff that you're not trying to do in order to, to save someone's life because if you do do that and you make the situation worse your your backside is going to be cheered up by the lawnmower lawyers your ass will be grass and that you know Bibby's pointing at me she's waving frantically what have I missed Bibby? you forgot why we have the aspirin in the trauma kit in case you're encountering someone that is possibly having a heart attack and a tablet can be put under their tongue yes. which most I think paramedics do if they're a bit iffy if mm -hmm. someone's having a heart attack they can do that because it, uh, aspirin is an anticoagulant. This is something we must be very careful about. It is an anticoagulant. And as first aiders, we are not lawfully allowed to dispense medication. However, if we say to the person, I do have this here. If you, if you want some of this, or if you believe this would be good for you, p please feel free to help yourself and do it yourself okay because we're not paramedics we're not doctors we're not surgeons we are ordinary everyday people trying to make a difference in this world helping each other because that's what good people do as Edmund Burke said all it takes for evil to succeed is for good people to do nothing. And that, compadres, is that. Now, if you found this helpful or handy, or this has given you some inspiration, tap the, the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and tickle the bell. Having said that, what I've shown and spoken about here tonight, absolutely nothing replaces doing an, an accredited first aid course. Getting in contact with St. John's if you're in Western Australia or the Northern Territory, the Red Cross, your state ambulance service. They will be able to tell you where to go for first aid training because nothing in this world can replace the knowledge and training you get in a reputable first aid course. And that, folks, is it for the time being. Stay tuned. Love yous.